All right, so I'm back with my sampler instrument. Uh, I don't currently have a sample loaded, so this is what it'll look like if you just load a blank preset. The first thing I'd like to do is load a sample in here and explore the repitch mode. This is the default mode that the sampler offers, and this will be the most familiar to you if you ever have played with a sample playback instrument before. If I want to load a sample, we can see here in the center, it says browse samples, multi-samples, and create new multi-sample. Now there's tons of different presets that you can load into the sampler instrument, but I'm not really interested in that. I wanna load a different sample and see what crazy madness I can make out of it. So I happen to have a folder full of, uh, there's a lot of different stuff in here, but I'm gonna grab a few of these samples. Let me see, what's this? All right, so we'll go with this sample here. Now, the sample is loaded. Uh, I currently have a MIDI controller sitting in front of me, so if I play this at different pitches. It plays back at the same pitch, at the original pitch. Now, the reason why is because when I've loaded this one sample in here, if we look at the top of the sample, we have some information here. Uh, this is the name of the sample. If I want to replace this, I could simply click on the folder here, and it brings my pop-up browser back up. To the right of that, I have this keyboard icon, and when this is disabled, this disables key tracking, which means that when I'm playing different pitches on a MIDI keyboard or entering different pitches into a MIDI clip, this note will just play back at the root pitch. Now, if I want this to follow the notes that I'm playing, I can enable this, and now key tracking is on, and it's set to 100%. So at 100%, it's actually going to play at the different pitches that I'm playing on my keyboard. One thing that we'll notice is that as I play this at different pitches, again, you hear the pitch changing, and we also hear the playback speed changing. So this is typical from what you would get with most sampler instruments. But one thing that's unique right off the bat is if I move my mouse down here below the repitch mode, we see a knob that says speed. Now, if I play the sample, I can adjust the speed knob. And then I can adjust the playback speed in real time and move it forward or backwards. Now this is really useful uh, if you want to, let's say use a modulator to get some sort of kind of scratching effects or to have like a, uh, a pitch slowdown or a pitch ramp at some point. This is used quite a bit. There's actually effects that are dedicated to doing just that and now you have it built into the instrument. It's quite awesome. Now I wanna bring this back to its default. I'm gonna simply right click and I'll go to set to default value. Now, with the repitch mode enabled, let's go ahead and look at a few more things down here at the bottom of the uh, sample window display. We see next to the uh, icon that says play, we have an R here. If I click on this, now I can play it in reverse. And you notice our start and end points. We have these big, huge yellow flags here. As I hover over this one, we see this number gets highlighted. So this is telling us the start position. I can either just move this to change the start point or just this number. Same thing with the end here. And to the right of all that, we have controls for uh, enabling loops. Now next to where it says loop, we have uh, three sets of arrows. With one forward arrow, there will be no loop. If I click on this one, we get a forward loop, so it's gonna play from the beginning of the loop start to the end of the loop, and then repeat over and over again. If we make the loop a little bit shorter here, and I think I wanna zoom in a bit, I'm just gonna hover my mouse in the middle of the display, click and drag up, there we go, a little bit more. So there we here, we have a repeating loop, it's uh, repeating forward. If I go to the third icon here, we have a forward and backwards arrow, so this will be a ping pong loop. It'll play forward and then in reverse. Now one thing I'm noticing is there's a slight little pop at the end, and sometimes you can get that. It can be a little bit annoying. I think what I'd like to do is maybe crossfade the beginning and end of the loop. In order to crossfade the beginning and end of the loop, the loop point, the loop start point, can't start at the very beginning. So I'm moving it in a little bit here. And I see here, this little icon looks like cat ears. <laughs> this is showing me the amount of the crossfade. I can either adjust this percentage here, or I can move this little handle, which will allow me to adjust the amount of the crossfade. All right, there we go. So there's a brief introduction to the repitch mode. Next, let's check out the cycles mode. <laughs> 